Welcome. Hey, welcome to a video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. I'm a UK reseller. I buy and sell antiques, collectibles, weird, wonderful, interesting things, and hope to flip them for a profit on my website, antiquesarena.com. You won't find me on eBay. Done it long enough. Anyway, today's video, a bit of an interesting one. Now, I'm an online reseller. I don't know about you. My sales are down. So what are we going to do? Now, I done a video at the end of last year, beginning of this year, where I talked about the changes HMRC were doing, um, changes in general, the recession, how people were struggling, the cost of gas and electrics. I've done a few videos on it all. And my argument or my discussion, my opinion was last year that if people were struggling to pay their gas, their electric, their bills, then given a choice between having a vase on a shelf or food in the cupboard or the bills paid, non-essentials such as antiques were going to struggle. And I was right. Another prediction I made was that the boot sales were going to be magnificent for buy-in this year. And again, I was right. I cannot keep up with the buy-in. However, the selling is down. So I thought, what am I going to do about it? So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to put a video together. A um, couple of reasons. One, if anybody else is struggling out there, um, you know, to keep the sales up, then it'll give you some ideas and things you may be able to do to improve your sales. And it sort of gives me a moment to clarify how I'm doing things. And I'm always trying to be productive. I'm always positive, And I'm always, you know, fighting and pushing forward. You know, tough times don't last, but tough people always do. So, as I said, we're still in a recession, in my opinion, whether people want to believe it or not. Now, everybody I talk to, all the dealers I know, people with shops, people selling on eBay, um, everybody is saying sales are down. I don't care. Sales are down. Now, I do know a couple of people who sell to the trade and their sales are up. However, there's one thing they got to understand. That's because the dealers are out there trying to buy the next thing to force the public or the member of the public and the collectors to buy. They're trying to find that one gem that goes, okay, well, that one's gone today. So if you're selling to trade, you're all right. But if you're looking for retail um, in the you know general public, then at the moment, if you're like me, sales are down. Now, I've done a number of things to uh, try and combat this. Um, first of all is product pricing. Now, I've spent weeks going through my website, playing with prices, lowering prices. Um, I've reduced prices on a lot of stock to be more competitive. Um, just this week, I've lowered um, price on miner's lamps because a year or two ago, a specific miner's lamp I had was selling for almost 200 pounds. Now they're down to 125s and 140s. So I've lowered the price. Um, so you've got to be productive and always keep an eye on your pricing. It's the same as gold and silver. Gold and silver has gone through the roof. So the prices of them goes up. Swings and roundabouts. So you've got to keep an eye on it. You've got to be productive with your pricing. Um, and if you can make your prices a bit lower, then you can make it more attractive and appealing to the general public because even when somebody in the general public is tightening their belt they still like to collect they still like to treat themselves and buy themselves a little bit now and again so if you can make it more appealing to them then fabulous then they'll still buy now that will all depend on how you buy now, if you buy like me, I buy from car boot sales, house clearances, estate sales, you name it, whatever. But I buy cheap. I don't go to auctions and spend hundreds of pounds with 20% commission plus VAT, leaving myself a 5% or 10% profit. Because then you've got no margin to work on. You can't bring the prices down, you're stuck. But with me, I go out, I cherry pick what I want to buy. Everything on my website is handpicked by me. Um, so, yeah. I pay cheap, but it also gives me room for times like this where I can now say, okay, well, times are a bit harder. I'm going to lower the prices a bit and boost the income. Um, so you buy smarter, pay less for the stock. So let's give you an example. 
instead of just going up to dealers and going, okay, well, I'm going to take this, 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 and paying £150 or £200, now I'll put the work in myself, because let's be honest, I was a bit lazy, we'll put the work in myself, and I'll dig the stuff out the boxes for a two, three, four, five pound myself. Uh, this week alone, I bought a almost 200 gram sterling silver trophy cup uh, fiber. Now, if I bought that off trade, I would have had to pay at least 50 pence a gram. So you're talking 90, 100 pound of scrap value. I would have had to pay in the hope then to sell it as an item and always have the scrap value back. So buy smarter, dig in the boxes, get in the junk boxes under the tables. It's no fun being on your hands and knees on the floor, you know, digging through, looking for the, some treasures, but you will find them. And when they've come in, they come in with the right money. Um, so that's what you got to do. You've got to literally be smarter. If you can drop your prices, drop your prices. If you can buy it cheaper, then it gives you more flexi room to lower them prices and it cuts your costs. If you can buy, I don't know, a miner's lamp. Um, trade price on a miner's lamp from dealers is 40 to 60 pounds, give or take. I bought three lamps this week for 20 pounds. They've gone out for 300. If someone was to come in and say, oh, I'll give you 200. I can't afford three. I could still do it. I still got 180 pound profit. Get in the boxes, dig in the junk and see what you can find. You'll be surprised. You'll pull some real gems out for a pound and two pound. Really, really, really well. Um, another area you can go, you can cut costs. Um, where possible anyway. So for example, if you're going to do traveling in the car, do less traveling. Um, if you've got to go to charity shops or if you want to go buy in a car boot sales, maybe take your parcels to the post office at the same time. Or even better now, Royal Mail, I don't know about other companies, but I use Royal Mail. Royal Mail will pick the item up from your home so you don't have to drive to a post office no more and they even charge you less for the privilege of it. So instead of paying the post office a commission now, they send their post people out, their postman, postwoman, wherever it is, out to my house. They pick the parcels up out of my parcel box in the front door and I'm paying 25% less on my postage for the privilege. So I'm also making an extra 25% on my postage because my website is still set up to automatically take Royal Mail full price. So I'm making a little profit for there. But if I can cut costs down, um, if I got traveling to do, um, I'll try and do everything in one day. So if I'm going to go shopping and I want to do charity shops, I'll do them together. If I want to visit my mother or my family, I'll do it all in one go. So if I can, I'll go out in one trip and save on the fuel. When you're paying £1.50, £1.60 a litre, don't take much to add up to a lot of savings. Um, another thing you can do, I already done this. Um, if you're on eBay, it'll still work for you. You can do make an offer option. I think you, on eBay, you can even send offers out to people and entice them in so you can send offers to watchers. With me, I, I introduced a make an offer button on my website so people can say, well, okay, that's a bit dear for me, but I wouldn't pay this and they'll make an offer and I can say, well, that still shows me a profit, take it away. Because I would rather lots and lots of smaller profits than one giant profit that may never come. So if, if a profit's there, it's gone. The only time I'll say no to a good profit is if the item is that rare, that desirable that I want it on my website, that I'm not going to replace it. And I think to myself, I don't really care if it sells or not. Um, that's the only time then I don't, don't accept them offers. But if I get an offer in and I can make money on that offer, it's gone. Buy-in is so easy. I cannot keep up with the amount of stuff out there. Everywhere you go to a car boot sale, I don't know about you, where you are, but in South Wales here, you've got Sully's on now, Gatley Gay's on, Terry Berth's on, Morrison's is on. There is stuff everywhere. There's gold, there's silver, there's antiques everywhere. And everybody seems to be struggling so people are selling they're letting go of the collections exactly how i predicted they would be now you can also offer fees depending on what type of thing you do now as you know i done a film um, not long ago where i thought sales were down i'll bring revenue in in another area i'll use my expertise now i've started i have a full page set or seven pages on my website now or eight pages of different services i offer from house clearances to mentorships. I've had multiple people use the mentorship on the hourly program. Nobody's taken a big package out saying, I want you to set me up in business and build a website and all the rest of it. 
where I've had about 15, 16 people use the hourly, um, hourly uh, pay system. And so far, the feedback on that is very good. And that, yeah, I think I'm starting to get that down to a T now. But I've offered lots of different services. Um, and I can't wait. The way I'm looking to improve things is hopefully get some house clearances and fund the house clearances and then promote the YouTube videos even more. But that then brings me to promotion. If the sales are down, you need to spread your net. A wider audience, a bigger online presence. It doesn't matter if you pick one item and share the history and showcase that one item, talk about that one item. Um, I have friends in Pont de Prix, um, Anagram Antiques, and Elaine makes teddy bears. She doesn't make teddy bears, I'm sorry. She buys vintage teddy bears and she dresses them up and puts jewellery on them. A lot of work goes into finding all the clothes, finding all the jewellery, and then she sells them on. So, you know, it's that type of thing. You could showcase the teddy bears or a bit of jewellery. You can, you know, anything you can just to promote a video. The more videos you get out there, the more photographs you get out there, the more online presence you get. And the more people that get to recognize you when the time comes that they want to buy something, you're already in their mind. They're already thinking, okay, well, I know somebody who does antiques. I like them. I like this stock. I'm going to go and have a look. Advertise on Facebook. Advertise on Instagram. Advertise on X. <laughs> I nearly called it Twitter. It's now X. Um, if you're not shy, make some YouTube videos. Whatever it takes to get your business out there, get your name out there, get well known. Um I recently done a mentorship program with um, a young lad and he wants to go from a full-time career to doing this. Now, he's picked a bad time. But as I've explained to him, opening a website, opening a shop isn't enough. You've got to then promote it, whether it's through YouTube videos, things like that. So the more online presence you can get, the better, honestly. Um, another one, diversity. Now, if you follow my channel, you'll know I try to specialize in the rare, the unique, the wonderful. And some weeks I've spent a thousand pound on stock, other weeks I'll spend 20 quid on stock. But either way, it's always been fabulous. However, this last six months, what I will say is sales will be down. So I've started changing and diversifying my stock. Instead of 100, 2, 3, 400 pound items now, I'm putting, as well as them, I'm putting on 20, 30, 40 pound items, a cheaper range, uh, so people can still buy. I'm putting on things that I don't normally buy and sell, like toys. I've, I've started buying some vintage toys and putting toys on there. Uh, I'm diversifying on the stock and the price. I'm putting some cheap, some expensive, some jewelry, some toys, some books, you name it, I'll put it on. So I'm no longer just sticking to the top of the market. Now, there are ways you can look at it. You can say people with money still got money. Um, it's only the middle class who are feeling the pinch. But in all honesty, the people with money still got money because they don't spend their money. Um, they know how to look after their money. So you've got to have something pretty special for them to want it. So there's ways, different ways of looking at it. Um, pros and cons for everything. Another thing I do now is I multitask. Very much like, um, you know, cutting costs and putting lots of tasks together in the transportation and things like that. So if I'm going out, I'll do it all in one go. When I'm selling at car boot sales, I'm stuck there for four, five, six hours. Once my stall is up, I go walking around buy-in. Once I've done my buy-in, I'm stuck on that stall until the end of the day. And people come and people go and I'm chatting to people. But you know what I've been doing lately? Working. I take my laptop, connect it to my mobile phone, and I'm working whilst I'm there. Now, that could have a negative effect, as in people don't feel comfortable to talk and buy. But believe me, I've been in the car boot sale business for long enough to know if somebody wants something on a table, they're still going to ask you the price. And I still talk to them whilst I'm working. So, Thursday, I was there, and I was inventorying and catching up on all my um, things online on the laptop. And Saturday, no, Sunday, I went to Gethly Gear and I'd done all my usual, my stall was set up and I was chatting to people just like this, stripping cable. I took 
a full roll of earth cable. Now, you all know I deal in scrap metals as well. Um, if I buy an oak box from auction, which I haven't done for a long, long time, but if I bought a box from auction, any metals in there that were no good would never get bent. They get put aside and saved up for Christmas. Anything, if I do a house clearance, any metals in there get saved up. If I'm walking around the car boot sale and I see a roll of wire and it's only two or three pounds, I'm going to buy it. This is what I achieved on Sunday. That is a 20 plus kilo ball of top grade copper cable that I stripped while at the car boot sale. So, making most of my time. If you sat there and you're serving people, why not do something else? If you sat there and stuck there, do something else. Don't just sit there and read a book. That's quite rude. Um, but I was actually talking to people while stripping that wire. I had my little wire stripper and I was like this, chatting away. And believe it or not, people were coming over and looking at me stripping the wire and they were going, oh, I wouldn't mind buying that copper off you and this and that. People were actually chatting to me while I was stripping the cable. So multitask. If it's something you can be doing uh, whilst working car boot sale or... If you can do something instead of sitting down just doing nothing bored silly, then do it. And another one is learn and educate. And what do I mean by that? During quiet times, maybe whether you're at a car boot sale, whether it's just quiet at home and you, in, you haven't got to do parcels and things like that, spend a bit of time to learn a new subject or educate yourself on the current trends. What's actually selling? Maybe go on eBay and actually have a look. What, what glass is selling at the moment? Are they still one mid-century? Are they buying Swarovski? Are they buying Georgian? Um, go to toys. What video games are they buying? What clothes are they buying? Just educate yourself on the current trends. Because trends go up and down. As I've already said to you in this video, um, a year or two ago, I was getting £200 for a miner's lamp. Now I've had to reduce the price because the prices have gone down. So educate yourself on what people are looking for at the moment and hopefully then you'll be able to find out what you can buy that they still want. The bad times never last. They, need, they never do. Um, collectors always got that urge they want to buy and if they get any spare money, they will buy. If you can weather the storms, you'll always come out on the other side stronger and better with more knowledge, more experience. And the next time another recession comes, you'll know what to do. But these are just some of the things I've been considering doing and or already done to make sure my business, Antiques Arena, stays going. Because despite whatever your turnover is, the costs add up fast. They really do. You've got to always be on top of your costs. You've always got to be on top of your spending. Don't matter how much you go in the bank, if you've got £100 or 100000 you've got to keep an eye on it because it can go fast. If you stick to some of them tips, or if you know some tips yourself, put them in the comments. Maybe other people can read the comments. And if you've got some tips you do I haven't included in the video, then maybe you could help some of the other viewers and me because these are the only ones I can think of I've done at the moment. Um, but what I will say is it's working for me. I've be I used to spend a thousand, two thousand pound a week on stock. Um, now I've cut it down to a few hundred a week, and massive difference, massive. Anyway, I hope you find the video helpful, interesting, useful. If you're in the antiques collectibles business or reselling business at the moment, and things are a little tough. Stick at it. It will change. It will turn around. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please like, share, comment. Um, visit the website antiquesarena.com. Um, articles, blogs, thousands of pieces of stock. It's all there just for a bit of fun. Um, but yeah, if you could share the videos, I'd be very, very grateful. Thank you very much, and I'll see you all soon.